Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who taught himself how to drive by watching all the Halloween movies. It's Adam Clement. That's actually true. So you, you for you didn't do driver's ed when you were in high school. You had a chance to take the class, and you said, "Nah, I'm going to watch H2O." I went to the DMV and I said, "No, sir, I'll pass this. It's okay. I'm compliant. Uh, I have watched the Halloween movies uh, 20 times over a piece, and." Uh, I know how to drive. Not only do I know how to drive, I know how to drive with a mask on. And isn't it true that the guy just gave you his keys? He said, uh, sir, I'm very impressed with your movie prowess and your uh, abilities, but I have to advise you to please not drive with a mask on. But here, yes, you are granted a license in the state of Florida. Enjoy uh, safe driving. Nice. But then you put yes. the mask on and you drove anyway. I did. They don't have to know that, though. God, oh, I shouldn't have said that. So for, for this one, uh, why why did you – I know you're a big Halloween fan, but when we you look through my data, what drew you to this one? Yeah, I'm sure uh, listeners are probably real tired of this. Like, oh, it's Halloween. It's got to be that Adam guy. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I mean, I, I think the the first movie really set the stage for this. This is obviously the seventh movie in the in the franchise. If you're uh, <laughs> not yeah. going by, of course, the retcons that have happened recently. But yeah, as as the seventh movie in the series, the first movie is really what sets this up. It's it's almost playing the long game, right? Because yeah. in the first movie, you learn that not only can he drive, he probably learned from somebody at the psychiatric ward or who knows, but that Michael does enjoy driving. If he's not killing people, he's not stalking, if he's not walking around, he's driving. He's cruising. So it's definitely, it's definitely a hobby. I would think that if he was filling out a dating app and he had to put out some hobbies, you know, killing, stalking, carving, he'd probably put driving. Yeah, a lot of INGs. Yes. So so for me, this one is interesting because he drives cross country. Not cross country, but he drives... Just about. Yeah, he makes a 1,994 mile trip. That's okay. That's really specific. Actually broke all this down. You know what? He's in Illinois. He drives all the way to Northern California. And while I was watching this movie, most of my posts come from questions that make me laugh. So we just talked about the It Follows one. I just thought it'd be funny to... It just made it put a smile on my face. This one, which you can read at Movies, Films, and Flicks. I think you should check it out. Mm -hmm. Read the post, share it, tell everyone about it, send it to your cousins. Go on Movies, Films, and Flicks, read it all. Uh, I kind of started it with some questions. It's how does he fill up gas? I broke down how many miles the Skylark can drive, and I figured out that the Skylark, so he steals the Skylark, a 1971 Buick Skylark. It averages 15 miles per gallon. And it has a 15.2 gas tank. So he can drive a total of 228 miles until oh, he has God. to refuel. It would be easier for him to refuel at night. But according to the math I did, he had to make five daytime gas stops. Which, that's funny to me. Because right. he, he doesn't have money. But he didn't get caught. There are no police trails. This is not Bonnie and Clyde. This is not the chase with Charlie Sheen. He Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, it, one thing to point out. It is funny because he does spend a lot of time at gas stations. Like he's at one in the fourth movie, right? He's yeah. in the is in uh, David Gordon Green's Halloween. Like he definitely is a patron of the gas station. However, as we've seen, he doesn't typically like paying. I think what he does is sort of smash and grab, right? He'll he'll still take what's needed, right? Whether that's mechanics coveralls or in this case gasoline, and just not pay. So I think he's just a dick. The issue is, is he, so he's pumping gas during the day. Sure. So he has to fill up his gas tank. Otherwise, he has to stop more. It would inconvenience him to stop more. Uh -huh. So, it, But if he gassed and ran many times, I, I have a feeling cops would be after him. There yeah, but be... do they really care about that kind of thing? I don't know. How often does that happen, really? And also, so many gas stations are different now. Like, I guess in New Jersey, it's illegal to pump your own gas. In this case, we're to assume what? That he's definitely pumping his own gas. He's not having somebody do it for him. But maybe he is. Are there any states in the... Uh, you know, Midwest that, that are, you know, having people pump the gas. Cause if that's the case, and I'm asking because I've never had it done, maybe they're doing it. And maybe he's just stiffening the bill. I could see that. It's a fun thing. I, just, and I don't want to see him siphoning gas because that means he has to take off his mask. No, uh, that takes away from the mystery and the intrigue. And also, I kind of thought about this. This is the, this is the one of the main reasons why I started it is does he use his blinker? And when you watch Halloween 1978, he does not. However, I broke down the entire mileage, and I GPSed it to find out how many times 
he could potentially use his blinker. If he obeys traffic laws, he would have used it a minimum of 17 times and mm. a maximum of 57. Do you think he used his blinker on the highway, or do you think he just got in the slow lane because I said he averaged 63.2 miles an hour to make it to Jamie Lee Curtis's house? Because that time, I figured out that he left, at what time he left to the time he got to Jamie Lee Curtis, it was about 43 hours. So I figured out the exact math from when he left Illinois to when he got to California. So he would have had to have averaged 63 miles per hour with his stop. That's Yeah, that's definitely slow lane material. Also, what's he using for fuel? Like unleaded, you know, how much did he spend on gas? I'm, that, that, I guess, is more contingent on the age, right? Because you're looking at, what, prices in 1997? So let's, say, let's say $2, right? So sure. each, each time he fills up his gas, it's about, let's just say, roughly 30 bucks. So he mm -hmm. has to do it nine times. So that's, what, $270? Yeah, if he was paying for it, he'd be, I don't know, that's a lot of money. Because I don't know if he collects that, which I think is pretty interesting. The The funniest thing to me is just the map, the the GPS I set up True. of the trip across country. Because he, does he listen to the radio? Well, also, <laughs> this is 1998, right? Yeah. The radio, radio is different than the radio is actually in use. Not so much now, maybe. G he don't have no GPS. He's using a map map, right? Oh, yeah. He's using like a paper folded map. That. Or what? He printed out a map quest, which let's be real here, even if he had access to a gas station amenities, I highly doubt that they're letting people get on the internet and print out map quests, because if he's doing any GPS work, it's probably with that. Shouts out to map quest. So when we talked about it follows, when I tracked the creature following, it still was just as scary. But thinking about Michael Myers using a map and driving in the slow lane kind of wrecks the mystique. Do you think... The reason that there's literally like four masks in this movie is because perhaps each time he filled up at the gas station, he picked up a new convenience store dime store mask. Yeah, he probably went in, got some jerky, bought a new mask, spray painted it. That's the best explanation I can give for the reasons why we have like the Halloween 6 mask. We have a CGI mask. We have uh, the Stan Winston one. I think the K&B FX one. Like there's so many masks in this movie. And then uh, another thing that was tough for me is all these places were fictional locations. The toughest thing for me was the map and find out where they were. Sure. I don't know. So I found a place with a similar location. That's how I came up with uh, what Langdon. For Hillcrest, I found, I, I like, hi, like looked down a place on Highway 139, and I looked up its distance to Yosemite Park, because that's where everyone goes. Mm -hmm. And then it's pro pro uh, proximity to the highway. <laughs> mm. So I was just staring at the maps, figuring that out. So I think I, I think my 1,994 thing sounds pretty good. And then I also had to deal with, the other car that he steals when he gets a, a flat tire, which do you think he knows how to fix a flat tire or do you think he just didn't have a spare in his trunk? Uh, I think he doesn't have the patience for it. So he, wait, think, he waits yeah. in a bathroom for hours? Uh, Well, we don't know how long he was there, right? We can only assume. But I think if you're Michael, you know, you're the embodiment of evil. You got places to go, people to kill. You'll probably like say, oh, to hell with this car. I'm waiting for an another one. So I don't know how long he waited in that stall or that bathroom. I guess he wasn't in there to begin with. He was outside. But yeah, my guess is it's probably easier to uh, kill somebody or steal their car. And the car, he, about a the car he stole was a 1956 International Harvester uh, Travel All. Yeah, it was an interesting choice. Uh, it doesn't really strike me as the type of automobile a young mother would be driving her little kid around in, but perhaps they just thought it fit Michael's um, aesthetic. And the one thing that made it pretty easy is that he didn't have to drive too far from that weight area to the town. And then the Correct. main and then the main thing is he waited downtown for her because he didn't know where the school was, which is interesting because right. then he followed her there. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't he know where the school is? Why would he know, though? Yeah, you're right. I just like the idea of him. Does he wear his mask while he's waiting for two hours on the side of the road? Absolutely. I love it. I just, I don't know. I just think this trip makes me smile. I don't know if it does the same to you. Just him driving across country. And it, it kind of made me happy to figure out him using his blinker. Or, you know, how many times he had to stop for gas. Him siphoning gas. Does he eat snacks? I know he eats rats in Halloween Resurrection. Sure. I... I like more the idea that somebody of his iconography would be forced to travel that far alone. And the idea that, you know, 
I don't know what kind of gamut of emotion that Michael Myers feels. Apparently not a whole heck of a lot, given the last movie uh, and their hypothesis. But, you know, certainly at some point the thought occurs to him, like, who might like a companion on this trip? Whoa. And who might he who might he be thinking of, right? The mind boggles. I mean, Tina. <laughs> Wait, this movie retconned Tina, didn't it? It did. So she doesn't exist, thank God. Oh, jeez. So one and two exist, correct? In this timeline? Yeah. Correct, yes. And three, technically, which I think counts. Although we don't really know what happens at the end of three, so that's kind of a fuzzy one. All right, so uh, any any final thoughts about this thing? Did this change the way you looked at Michael Myers? It does when I start to think about how lonely he might be on the road. That's a long trip. Yeah, that and this idea that he has so many masks at his disposal that he's, like, picking out a certain one for a certain feeling he may have. Like, aesthetically, he might feel, you know, a little bit more modern. He might go with a a gaudy cgi mask or other times he might be feeling a bit more nostalgic and he'll pull out the mask he wore in halloween 6 even though that movie was retconned as well i will say though i do love in this film when laurie strode goes on the offensive yeah it's a great moment i don't it's it's a bummer that that happened to be retconned and i don't want to say favor necessarily but i suppose in preference of the new direction the that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and team have taken, but I agree that it's a it's a strong uh, final act between Frankenstein's monster and, and well, I guess she didn't really create him, but I like the appropriate allegory that's used in, in the classroom scene. You just don't see it much. I like LL Cool J. Josh I know you do because Deep Blue Sea. And then Michelle Williams is in this movie. Yeah, it's wild to see. Uh, it's always a good reminder that she like had a career before this prestige you know uh oscar stuff you know she was on dawson's creek and yeah I, with this I, gang. now i do want to rank his driving before we get out of here because we, we i don't want to go too long so i'm going to say halloween h2o is his best driving then halloween is his second best then i like his really crazy driving in halloween 5 the revenge of michael myers yeah he's, driving, he's real crazy he's driving tina around town and he stops so she can get some food which i love mm -hmm. and then i'll give halloween 4 the return of michael myers because he just busts out of a place and it's not too thrilling yeah that's more of him being a backseat driver <laughs> exactly so hey thanks for joining me man absolutely thank you for having right. me so for mark hoffmeyer and for adam clement this is movie some of the flakes data we'll see you next week <laughs>